All right, guys, welcome to another episode of Chasing LA. I'm here with an amazing actor. He's been on a lot of TV shows, a lot of TV shows, a lot of films. Emmy Award winning actor, Mr. Robert Richard. What up, y'all? What's going on? Where are you out there? Love y'all. What up, everybody? What's going on? Shout Joining out. me on the sofa for Chasing LA. Yeah, that's right, man. It's a comfortable sofa, too. Right? My interviews, I don't like it to be stiff. I just like to sit this here. This is, this and is have relaxing. Fun. I mean, yeah. We just need like like a pitcher of like, ice in it, <laughs> some champagne, or right? Some growing just sexy chill. stuff. Yeah. Um, but congrats on everything. If you don't know, he has a brand new movie coming out, um, May twenty second, Chocolate, Chocolate City. City Memorial Day weekend, <laughs> which we're right. gonna talk about for sure. If you don't know, Robert Richard is not on any social media. So if there's any accounts that say Robert Richard, the Robert Richard, it's Robert, it's not him. He's it not on social me, media. Right? Not on Twitter, not on Instagram. Not on the counter, it wasn't me. <laughs> not on the sofa, it wasn't, it wasn't me. me. There you go. Well, you're not on Facebook either? No, nah, man. You know, I just, I want to have that real life connection with all my fans. Yeah. You know, so I, I travel the world and go see, go everywhere, every single neighborhood. I'm always driving randomly, and if I get out of a car and I'm in a mall or in a grocery store, and someone comes up to me, you're getting a picture, you're getting a hug, you're getting some advice. You know what I mean? Is Whatever it a privacy do. thing though that you don't that you don't want to do the social media, or is it just? I'm gonna tell you the truth, man. I think social media is a full time job. It is. It yeah. really is. <laughs> it really is. Full time job, right? So I already have a full time job right yeah. now, and the thing about it is, you want to be entertained by me. There's a certain way you can go watch television. I'm on television nearly every day. Yeah. Right. And in the movies and stuff, like come out and support. But it's not that I don't love my fans. It's that when my fans they see me like, yo, I'm actually with Rob right now. Right. And I'm not jaded now because I don't feel like I've gotten bad messages or I'm, I, I hear all the horror stories about being on social media. I still love people. Yeah. You know what I mean, so it's just kind of like I'm just kind of like grassroots approach. Just kind of beating the street and so like I'll probably be on your bus somewhere, you know, <laughs> or I catch an like Uber pool with you or something. Like Uber that. pool. Yeah. <laughs> You're from LA. Were you one of those child stars who was pushed into acting by your parents? I don't want to put him on the spot. Yeah. Or were you one who was like, I want to actually pursue this? No, nah, man. I mean, I just like, I was an athlete, man. I yeah. played sports and I loved baseball. And I was also a bad kid. And I yeah. was getting in a lot of trouble in the streets. And so, you know, one day, literally, I was like outnumbered like three to one in a fight. And like I ran to a building and that happened to be an acting school. And the rest is kind of history. Yeah. So it's kind of like God kind of like took care of me. And put me in a you know a place that I wanted to be and that was productive, and happened to be the arts. And since then, like you know, found an agent you know from some theater productions that I got in. I'm still with the same agent. Now we're 20 years later, and I got you know the number one film coming out Memorial Day weekend. That's right. Chocolate, be there. That's right. Sexy chocolate. Do you think that you have an advantage as an actor growing up out here? Because then. If you're coming out here as a newbie without knowing anybody, you have no network. Right. But since you already have friends out here and everybody kind of helps each other out? I think it's the advantage is that I get to start younger, right? If you're in any other part of the world, right, like luckily we all have a broadcasting platform. We got right. YouTube, we got Instagrams and Vines and stuff like this where we can like let people know that we're interested in the arts, interested in entertainment. But when you, you know, growing up in the 90s, like if you were 13 and you lived in you know San Francisco or San Diego, that's right. a long drive. It's an eight-hour drive for an audition. Yeah. And if you're anywhere outside of the state, then like you don't really have access to even go on auditions. Yeah. So you kind of really have to have like your parents make a decision to like you know move you out here and get you in Burbank, get you in Hollywood, so you can go on auditions. So that's the one advantage. And then you know, after being a young person in the business as an adult, I'm sort of in the same boat as everyone else. Like the playing field's even again. Right. So you could be a guy from, you know, Ohio or Texas or Florida or even like New York and come out here and I'm auditioning for parts just like them and the playing field's even again. So you've been in so many things. And you're one of those actors where you look at your IMDb and I'm like, I remember it, all that stuff. Yeah. But the big stuff like Coach Carter, Veronica Mars, Cousin Skeeter. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, of yeah. course. What was it like, especially for one-on-one? Because -on -one? I feel like one-on-one -on -one is when you really, like, everybody's like, oh, Arnez, Ballard, like, everybody. It's so cool, man. I love the fact that I played Arnez and had, you know, a chance with Brianna and, yeah. and her dad to be on that show. This is a blessing to be in my life, and I'm, like, thankful to the executive producer, you know, the boat. I love you, you know, the... yeah, she was the one that. She worked on my wife and kids yeah. and was like, I want to get you on my own show. And I had never done comedy before. Like I was on my cousin Ske uh, my cousin Skeeter, mm -hmm. and everyone loved that show. Yeah. Like I, I have so many athletes to this day who are like, "That's my favorite show." <laughs> right. But but um, I had never really done comedy as the funny guy, always been the straight guy. Yeah. So it was a little bit of adjustment to me, and I was kind of nervous to be honest. But you know, I 
figured it out. Yeah. And, you know, 113 episodes later, like, we have, you know, one-on-one in our history book. So it's cool. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So I know you talk about taking risk, but out here it can be hard because you deal with a lot of rejection. The roles aren't immediately after each other all the time. Right. So how do you navigate dealing with rejection and also being patient, waiting for the next role? Well, I tell a lot of actors this. I'm like, there's a difference between being an actor and being famous. Yeah. Right. So a lot of people, what I see is they want to be famous. And that's different than working as an actor. You got to be in love with the craft, in right. love with the passion. Like, you could totally go out and get a part in the local theater yeah. and kill it and get rave reviews and invite your friends to come see you do that and then just build a snowball up. But nobody wants to be in a theater program. No one <laughs> right. wants to do the small stuff. They're like, I want to hit it big. I want to work with Steven Spielberg. Right. Well, you got to like, you know, build a foundation first and do local theater, do things you can do, do conventions, do conservatories, that kind of stuff, and really like take care of the craft first. And then all the other accolades and rewards that come after that are going to come naturally because you're working from an integrity part and from the passion of the business. I love it. See, you sound and seem, obviously from your work, but even in person, you seem like somebody who like truly loves acting. You've done all these roles. What would you say is the role that really solidified the fact that regardless of if you made it or not, you have to continue acting? That's a good question. It might be lighted up. Really? Yeah, because Light It Up was a stretch, man. Like, I remember the first day we were on set, they brought me to the hair and makeup room and they like literally glued dreads in my head. <laughs> and like that changed the way that the world interacted with me. I right. could feel it, you know, I'm high yellow light skin dude with green eyes. Like yeah. the I, a certain way that people deal with me at the liquor store, at the bank, and it became different when I had the dreads in my hair. Yeah. You know, and I feel like the dreads became like the focus of my entire identity and my persona. And then they had me like, they made me like only wear bum clothes for six months. Oh God. So I was like in these horrible, like these horrible clothes or whatever. And I had this hair or whatever. And I was really like, not depressed, but I really embodied the character. Yeah. And then to be that person next to Usher, who was still Usher at that time, like on tour with Janet Jackson, and like <laughs> selling out arenas, Usher. And he gets to still be Usher. Yeah. So, like, I'm hanging out with this dude, you know what I mean, who's, like, the spotlight's on him, and he's literally, like, the biggest pop star on the planet at the yeah. time. I'm working with Forrest Whitaker's Academy Award, where I'm working with beautiful Vanessa Williams, and I feel trapped in this identity, and all that work got translated to the film, and I did some of my best work, but that was the thing that said, listen, if you love this work, it's going to be hard. Right. Right? The Daniel Day-Lewis right of, like, saying, I'm never going to not be Abraham Lincoln or Last of the Mohicans or in Gangs of New York, that villainous character he played. Yeah. Like, that's the hard work that has to go into this business if you want to be successful. So that's probably the one that was like, you make it through that. That was like my initiation. Like, all right, you, you're really in to stay. I have so many questions. I know we have to, I want to get to Chocolate City, but you're going to wait. I have so many yeah, questions for you. Yeah, keep them waiting. So um, you were growing up as an actor when there was a lot of uh, black television shows. Yeah. Especially in the 90s. Like, there were so many shows. TGIF, <laughs> right? We had all the shows. But we had a lot. Now we have Empire. We have Scandal and How to Get It With Murder and all these shows that have black Great leads. shows. Great shows. And then this coming season, all these pilots that are being picked up with black actors. So how does it feel growing up and being an actor in a time when black actors had a chance, but now in a time when it seems like black actors even have a further chance to succeed. You know what's crazy? That I want it work then and I want more work now. <laughs> <laughs> That's how it feels. I'm just proud, you know, we've always been a resilient culture, yeah. you know? And that's the one thing that we can relate to a lot of, you know, minorities and everything. And the majority, too. I mean, I'm sure it feels the same way for certain, you know, nationalities and stuff. Like, listen, we've been the leader in politics for years. And now, you know, our cultures get the chance to be the leader of the free world. Yeah. So it oscillates on both sides. And, you know, right now when we have the winner ourselves and things are picking up for us, like, just support black stuff. You know, no matter what culture you are, like, you know, we're all here doing the best entertainment exactly. to entertain everybody. I want everybody's support. So, you know, put your money where your mouth is. Tune into the shows, watch the shows, you know, spend the money and the things that they're, you know, go buy tickets and do everything the right way and support yourself so that we can all prosper together. I, I love, love it. it. I love it. Do you watch Empire? I do. It's a great show, too. Oh, I love who's your show. favorite character? I love that show. No, listen, the oldest son is one of my favorite characters. Really, Trey? I, wa I wanted his birthday, <laughs> I was like, yo, put me on. Put me in, coach. I'm ready. <laughs> did you audition for that show? Yeah, I did, man. I was in that audition for an hour. Yeah? And I thought for sure I had this in the bag, man. You I can actually I mean? see you in that role. No, under, I, yeah. I was, I, literally, I'm making everybody in the room cry. Everything really stretching my stuff out. And, 
you know, there's been times where I've walked down that path where I've gone to six auditions yeah. of the same project. Like you go and they call you back, and they call you back again. I've gone to six and gone all the way, signed contracts and everything, and then like not get it in like the 25th hour, man. And it's like, you know what? Back to the drawing board, back to work. I know we talked about this earlier, but then that's a great example. So if you if you went for these roles over and over again and you think you have it in the bag and then all of a sudden it's just like they go with somebody else, how do you, because some people can't just wipe the slate clean that quick. So how is it because you have lived out here and you grew up doing it? I think a lot of it too is just my mentality, but I see it like sports. Yeah. Right? So like you can go to the World Series or like the like, you know, Super Bowl or like the NBA Finals yeah. and like not win. True. You know, like True. LeBron can go all the way. Like I won last year, and then like the San Antonio Spurs just put a whooping on me on national television, <laughs> right? The and game was awful, right? And then it's like, okay, regroup, right? Switch the team if you have to. Go to back to your hometown. Get back to the grindstone and get back at the next season. So that's True. how I think about it. It's like you know, maybe I get the biggest victory that I won this season. So I just got to be stronger and tougher, and a more better team, better coaching, and go back next season. That's great advice, man. right? And then hopefully I get to be somebody like if I can't beat Jordan, right? right? If I can't win a three peat, take two years off and come back and win a three peat, then hopefully I can be like a Tim Duncan or a Kobe Bryant, that, like wins a couple in a row, then maybe lose a couple and come back and win some other ones. But <laughs> as long as I get my rings, you know, right? What I, mean? I want my seven rings, you know what I mean? <laughs> and Chocolate City is gonna be one of them. So let's talk about it, Chocolate City. Yeah, buddy. So we many on the people boulevard. are excited about this movie. I'm excited. Too. If you don't know, we're gonna look at the trailer right now. We sell fantasy, not sex. Sex has an ending. Fantasy never ends. But now, we gonna add a little chocolate. Hi, Carmen. What are you gonna let me take you out this weekend? You don't even have a car. You gonna pick me up on your bike? And here's your check. It's gonna be tight around here for the next few months. My schedule's been cut. Hey, what happened to the dude you met the other night? He said he had a job. I manage this place. Give me a call. Whoa. You'll be fine. They know it's amateur night. Get dressed. You're on in two minutes. The one and only. Dude, what's his name? Sexy Chocolate. Sexy Chocolate. That kid, you'll never be me. No, you'll be better. There's no room in this place for both of us. Tell the chocolate said. One of my co-hosts wants to know, she said that on some films, some of the actors will surprise people in theaters and make an appearance. Do you think that while people are watching Chocolate City, that you'll go to a theater, walk in, and be like, what's up? There's, there's no question. I'm probably be in 50 states, walking in the matinee, the 3 o'clock, the 5 o'clock, the 8 o'clock, the 10 o'clock show, 12 o'clock show, out there just giving love and chocolate and hugs. Oh my God. What no, was it like on set for you? It's a lot of pressure, right? You yeah. Know, I, take my, I take this very seriously. I, I really approach it like... I see Tom Brady, I see, you know, Mayweather, I see like Eli Man, I see Kobe Bryant like yeah. getting injured and say I'm getting back in there. And I really take that mentality into how I go to work. Yeah. There's four hundred people, we're all there, we're all there for the same reason, to make an honest living, take care of our families. Right. So I have to have that respect for everybody that I work with and hold them to the same standard that I hold myself and all give us the best, most excellent work today. Right. And if today is gonna be a hundred days straight of doing a film then every single day I expect everyone to bring their best, right? Just to, to bring your best, bring your A game. So, you know, it, it, a lot of times, you know, the actor tends to be like the lead and like set the tone yeah. on the film, on set. And, you know, I played sports, but I was the captain of every team growing up. So I take that role seriously. Like, yo, I'm bringing the best out of my team, out of the camera guy, the lighting guy, the sound guy, the caterer, the makeup, the <laughs> wardrobe, the janitor, everybody is going to be their best today. I love it. So that, that's just kind of how I approach my process. And I love it, man. I love what I do. So why do you think people should go see this film? You know, it's a family movie, man. Really? To be honest, man. It's really, really entertaining. Um, I went to a private screening, and that, that was the biggest note. Like, they had 200 people put in a secret ballot, 
and the average score was 98 out of 100. What? And the number one thing was is entertaining. The movie's so clean. Like, this is the kind of movie where if you're watching it with your, you know, it's a radar movie. Yeah. But if you're watching it with your kids, 16, you know, 14, 15, 13, whatever, and you're a parent, you can sit there in the theater and enjoy this movie and not feel like, man, I wish I wouldn't have brought my, my kid. Right. You know what I mean? So that's one thing I really love about it. But it's an event, man. It's a roller coaster. You know, we got fight scenes in the movie. We got, like, the best international model in the world. We got a great cast. And the movie just awesome. It's about a young man who do anything for his mom. And if that means getting up on stage and shaking his butt and, you know, <laughs> tidy whities and having his abs all greased up, that's what we're going to do. Right? So, yeah, I mean, it's, just, it's a great film, and I'm very proud to be a part of this one. I can't wait to see it. Like I said, I'm going to go with my, my friends and my co hosts and we're going to watch it. In the theater as yeah. soon as it comes out, so we are super excited. Open at night, <laughs> be there, tell a friend, tell a friend, tell a family member, tell a friend. <laughs> so when you see, since you're not on social media, when you see like the rumor came out with Vivica Fox, mm -hmm. so when that stuff comes out, I love you, Vivica. I love you. <laughs> I love you. When that stuff pretty. comes out, how do you navigate since you don't have social media? Do you just let it go? I just took a lot of offense to it because they said that I was just rocking her trailer. I was like, man, I knocked the trailer over. <laughs> <laughs> Diminish my activities? Ah! <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just joking. I'm joking. No, I mean, I think about it as all love, right? Yeah. Like, I've had a crush on Vivica since I was like, since she's on Out All Night. Yeah. Day. I got like lists when I was a kid, like my five top women and Vivica Fox was, was on, on that list. list. Right. So, you know, to, to hear stories come out, whatever with Vivica, I'm like, yo, I, all I want to do is hug you, girl, hug you, and just lay a smooch on you. <laughs> You know, but she plays my mom in the film, yeah. and she's fantastic, and it's just an honor to work with her and my whole cast, and we got great women in the film, man, like Adrian Malouf's in the film, Carmen Electra, she's gorgeous in the film, and then all the boys are great, too, you know, yeah. D-Ray Davis, Michael Jai White's in it, Darren Houston is in it, like, Genuine's in it, and my boy TV, Tyson Beckford's present it, <laughs> yo, go support Tyson, he's in Vegas, Chippendale show, oh, every yeah, girl, I saw that. you can get your fantasies to come true, <laughs> and dreams are made real, and lost wages. Shout out to Vegas. Love you guys. Oh my God. I'm so excited to see this film, man. One camera went dead, so we're gonna continue with this one. Uh, this will go to a fan on Periscope. I'll do a contest. So we play a little game. Yes. It's money on the table, so I, I feel like I already won. There you go, I already won the game. So this game right. is called um, Strip Down or Sit Down. Strip Down or Sit Down. Now we're not actually stripping as far as removing clothes, but the way it works, I have some props on the table, right? There you go. There's a hat, some money, another Eight. hat, some sunglasses. Each of us will do three moves. And then after I upload this on YouTube, in the comment section, they'll either tell us to sit down or strip down. Ah, okay. So, so wait, so oh, the dance moves, okay. Yeah. There you go. So you do a move, I do a move, you do a move, I do a move, and then the okay. last one. All right, that sounds good. And we'll do it to Pony. And then in the comment section, then you will put whether or not he should strip down, I should sit down, we both should sit down. <laughs> there you go, there or you go. Strip there you down, go. we'll make it happen. There you go, I like it, I like it. Oh yeah, right, okay, shout out. Okay, first of all, this song's Pony. Everybody knows the song Pony, right? So I'm gonna do the Clydesdale. That's right, that's the big horse, you know what I mean? Thoroughbred. Bow, oh, bow, oh, bow. And whip it, whip it, ride that horse. Ride that horse and spank that donkey. Wow! I cannot. Yeah. All right. So I'm at a disadvantage here okay, because see, yep, I wasn't. Practice. I wasn't trained in the movie. See, now I'm gonna have my acting class. I'm gonna have my dance class. <laughs> acting dance. All right, right. So mine will be um. Let me think of something. Make this happen. Oh, I'll do the hula hoop. Okay. Okay. So I feel like the hula hoop. Okay. You just gotta like go around with it. Oh yeah, get it! Oh, get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! Get it! Go around, around. You just keep going round and round. You speed it up. Let it fall. When the chorus come up, you speed it up. It's dropping. It's dropping. There you go. And if you want to get crazy, do a split the end, but I can't do all that. Yeah. Okay. They probably gonna tell me to sit down. All right, I'm gonna use one of these props right now. Okay. Right. You adding the props? Uh huh. Right. Oh, not the glasses. The next one. The next one. Right. It's the Mile High Club. Oh my God. Woo! Yeah. Right. So you just go here, you go ahead and float with it. Uh, right, okay. it's like a jet, St. Cruz okay. line. Oh, and then that little turbulence. The turbulence, 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 turbulence. Ball high club, yeah! See that? That's my aviator I'm right getting there. whooped right now. That's top gun, there you go. So this one okay. will be called the party trick. Okay. Don't really know what I'm gonna do with it okay, yet. Okay, yeah, okay, all right, look at that. Dude, I'm just gonna, I think you would, you, would, you would start with the hat on your head. Okay. 
Right. And then um, I think I would think I would be shirtless for this in like a, a thong. Okay, right. And then I would flip this, something like this, and then you just go like oh, this with, yeah, the, with right. the party hat. There you go. Just go like that, and you just go all around. There you go. But I feel like it's still similar to the hula hoop. See, man, you gotta get more creative, I man. I can't be, I'm not a, I, you know what I'm saying? Get all right, this. The next one is for everybody who want to get wet out there, Okay. Right? This one is called a Coke bottle. All right, so first of all, we're gonna turn the Coke bottle upside down, okay. right? And then we're gonna shave out the Coke bottle. Oh, oh, okay. Oh, oh, Coke bottle, Coke bottle, Coke bottle, Coke bottle, Coke bottle, Coke bottle. You know what it is. Oh, he flashed the abs. It's a lose lose gotta, situation gotta for me. I cannot win. Gotta throw it. All right, so my final one. All right. Will hey, be, <laughs> I set the ball real high for you. My final one will be I'm desperate. Okay. Here I go. will pay you $8 <laughs> with these $2 bills to tell me to strip down. Hey, hey. Shout out to Blizzards. <laughs> man, that was a blast. Did you learn those on set? No, man. I just. <laughs> Man, we had a hard time. I had a hard time on set, man. Yeah. I was like, okay, I'm walking out of the curtain, and there's 400, you know, intoxicated women yeah. who really want a live dance. And I thought, man, you need to just go out here and just own this. Yeah. And like, you know, Tyson and Bolo, they were like, listen, man, you got this. Don't even worry. Just go out there and just be the animal that you are. Just be a beast. Yeah. So I walk out there like a T-Rex. I'm going to eat everything in my in sight. I said, I'm gonna eat you, I'm gonna eat you, I'm gonna eat you. All y'all getting Nobody's safe. That's right, nobody's safe. Church of the Wild. Man, I love it. Well, that wraps it for Chasing LA. Make sure you check out Chocolate City on May 22nd. I would say follow you on social media, but you are not on social media. That's so. right, see me in the streets, I give <laughs> love, chocolate, and hugs. And he may be in a theater near you, surprising you. And video on demand, go see Chocolate City yes, Support. Yes, yes. We love you guys. The best, most entertaining movie of the summer, hands down. I ain't like an explosion right now, and then a jet just like flying through camera. That's what we need. I love it, man. Well, thank you so much. Thanks Yo, for joining man, me on Chasing work, LA. Man. Absolutely, man.